So I want to talk about changing ideology, right? So here in Cape Verde, we have this ideology that has kind of existed for the last 40 or so years. Nukateng, right? Ah, nukateng ni olio, nukateng petrolio, nukateng oro, nukateng dinheiro, nukateng só criola bonita, right? And that's not going to change. The criola bonitas will continue on, but everything else will change. Everything has already changed. Um, so, but what I mean by that is that we are now in an opportunity that exists where we have access to the internet. Simple as that, right? So here in Cape Verde, I think we're at about the 40% mark, where about 40% of the population have internet access. So if you have access to the internet, you have access to information. If you have access to information, you have access to data. If you have access to data, you have access to gold. So therefore, saying nunca tem ouro is no longer valid. Nu tem ouro. It's up to us to dig for that ouro and seek it out, right? It's not going to happen by itself. So we've already begun this process, and I'm going to tell you how we've done it so far and how we need all of you to join in now moving forward. All right? So I just want to give you a quick view from the inside. And what I mean by that is inside the top five technology companies and what's happening right now in the world. When we talk about Microsoft, Facebook, Google, Amazon, Apple, what's actually happening there? As I said, all we're doing is moving around data, right? We take data from here, we put it here, we take input from here, we put it there, we display it here. Um, but in the most, fu the most fundamental aspect of it, all that's really happening, again, is that movement of data. What the software actually does is not where the value is. The value is in the data itself. So for example, I could find any developer in here who's in this room today and give him you know, uh, one year to go ahead and rebuild Facebook by himself. And I guarantee you he'd be able to do it. If he took the time and the effort, he'd be able to do it. The value is not in the software. The value is in the data and the time to market that you're able to get that software out and the amount of users you're, out, you're able to bring into it as quickly as possible. Okay, so that's very, very important because of what we're going to be doing here. The question is, how can we leverage that data? Okay, how can we in Cabo Verde leverage the amount of data that we now have out there? And specifically user data. So if you have a Facebook, for example, that has 1.8 billion users, and we have 7 billion people in the world, I guarantee you that we now are able to funnel in and create a Cape Verdean identi uh, identity provider directly from there. So when we talk about identity providers, we talk about platforms that allow us to seek out programmatically your identity. And I'm not saying that from identity theft perspective, your public identity. First name, last name, email address, locale, language that you speak, gender, your age. So each one of these currently allow us to, to extract information from there. So moving forward, Moving forward, what we're going to be doing is collectively bridging the gap between all the different industries that we have here in Cape Verde, all the different government agencies, extracting data as much as we can from out the diaspora and bringing it all together into one pool that we collectively can make use of in various, various ways. This slide right here is very, very important. I'm a little concerned, right, and this is where I start getting uh, a little radical, right? And so I'm very, very concerned with the amount of time and effort that people are using as it relates to worrying about how many likes I have on my Facebook page, how many followers I have on Instagram, how many friends I have on Snapchat, how many people viewed my Instagram story, right? While that's all good, and while that's important to your business, and while today we have a larger uh, distribution channel than we've ever had before, we have to remember that the value's in the data, right? So if you're taking all this time, time is money. Right? So even your time that you spend and you're sharing the same thing 10 times, time is money. So you need to be able to make sure that, you know, th there's a saying that we're going to bring up. It says, if 10,000 people are doing something, don't beat 10,001. That 10,001 has to be the person who goes against the grain and does something different. Right? So don't be that 10,001 person. Diversify your portfolio. Diversify your digital portfolio. What does that mean? Yes. Distribute your content via social, distribute via Facebook, via Instagram, via all the different channels that you have access to. But today, I want all of you to add one element to it, the data element. When you leave this door today, you need to begin thinking about, okay, this is all good, but how can I now start to extract data so that data is not only valuable to me, it's valuable to the others that I work with, it's valuable to Cape Verde, it's valuable to Africa, it's valuable to how the world is changing. Remember, the value is in the data. 
right? So technology equals change. And this is part of the change that I'm talking about. A few slides ago, I said, don't be a victim to the algorithm. The algorithm is the following. When you're looking at your Facebook feed, when you're looking at your Instagram feed, when you're looking at your Snapchat feed, those are all powered by a very, very robust algorithm that, it, that basically decide what's going to be pushed to the top, what's going to be pushed to the bottom, who's paying for an ad that's going to go right to the, right to the top as well. So as you're sharing your content, you're sharing, but organically, it's going to get pushed right to the bottom. But if you had that user's data, you could communicate with them directly via broadcast email. You could communicate them using the Facebook ad platform, but uploading the user data to ensure that you seek out the exact person that I want to seek out. Okay? So essentially what you're doing is you're going to be reducing your expenses and increasing your visibility. Okay? So technology is equal to change. So we're changing. We're changing daily. We're changing right now as we speak. So it's important that to understand that if there's not some level of pain that you're experiencing on any given day when you're working on something, then you're probably not being challenged enough. You definitely need to be feeling pain, or else it's all relative. You're just going to be uh, basically in an experience that is equivalent of everyone else. So to stand out, you have to go to the next level. Okay? And as I mentioned, it's all relative. So what does that mean? So if we have all these platforms, and now we have a different way of communicating with people, so does your competitor to the right, so does your competitor to the left. So at the end of the day, what's really different from how things were before? It's not much different, right? So if you have one telecom who's promoting their, their services to you, have another telecom service promoting their services to you, nothing much really changed from 10 years ago when they didn't have social platforms. But what does change now, again, is your access to the data and what you can extract at any given interaction with your customer. So the opportunity. So this, this is where... Cape Verde comes in. So the, all the, 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 what I spoke about before was all about the foundation about what we need to talk about today. Currently, Africa is the emerging market. There is no question. What's happening today in technology is the following. All the platforms that I mentioned, the, fa the Facebooks, Instagram, etc., are reaching a point of saturation, right? So they've reached so many users that they're getting to a point that they're beginning to plateau. They're beginning to plateau. Facebook has 1.8 billion users. There's 7 billion people in the world. What are they going to do to continue to increase their numbers? They're a public company in the United States. They have to show to Wall Street that they're, they're still um, uh, relevant, that they're producing a profit, that the numbers are steadily increasing at an ongoing rate. To do so, they have to look to the emerging markets. They have to go to the places where people don't have access to internet. They have to bring the infrastructure to get them online. Once they get them online, then they're going to supply them with a device. Once they supply them with a device, they're going to supply them with a the platform. They're going to bring all this to people in those emerging markets. So in this case, Africa, for example. And they will, they will foot the bill. They will pay for that infrastructure to get you online. Because once they bring one individual online, they're able to calculate the amount of revenue that that one individual is able to drive. Okay? But again, Africa is the emerging market. So what does that mean? We have a very, very, very big opportunity right now. Each one of those five technology companies that I mentioned are seeking out which country within Africa is going to be the best beta test to take this initiative on. Which country is most stable? Which one has a stable economy? Which one has a stable democracy? Which one has a good percentage of people online that we can test things out with? If you haven't noticed, a certain company by then, which starts with face and ends with book, has been here in Cape Verde two times already in the last year, again tomorrow. So stop and think about that for a little bit. What is it they're looking for from a small island country in the middle of the Atlantic Ocean? Not in the middle, but off the west coast of Africa. Cabo Verde is the beta test. So we have to be able to know that we have a huge opportunity that if we don't plan to take that opportunity upon us, we're going to miss out on it. So this talks about the journey and that the journey has already begun and we want you to join us. So these are a few examples of what we've done in the last five or so years major accomplishments that are related with Cape Verde that have been done via data and via this process. The first, the government, right? So right now, the, the party that's in, in, uh, in power right now, we assisted them with their political campaign all through data, okay? We have tourism. We're starting another platform called Visit Cabo Verde. This morning, I took a quick run, and I was running by the, um, the new casino construction site that's coming up. And as I'm running by, I didn't think about what's going to be in that casino. 
I thought about how are we going to access the data of the people who attend that casino who come from outside. Not the owner of the casino, us, Cabo Verde. How are we going to get access to that? I recently attended a, uh, a resort in Sal, a resort in Sal where I stayed for two days and I didn't hear one Cape Verdean song. And I immediately approached the general manager and brought it up to him. And he said it wasn't part of, of their, their, the, the direction they wanted to go in. But they were on our soil, but they didn't want to play a Cape Verdean song. So how do we get access in between, between the tourist, right? So you have the tourist, you, have, you need a platform in between, and then you need the actual resort. We need to have access to that data. We need to know who's coming here. If we're at a point where we have almost, where we're nearing towards a million tourists per year, someone tell me if we have even 100 user information from those people who've attended here. I doubt it, right? So this is where we have to you know, hit those pain points. This is where we need to be a little radical and say, hey, something needs to be done, something needs to be done quickly, all right? So we talked about the tourism side. Music. Music is one of our main exports, right? Music is one of our main exports. Our culture is one of our main exports. If we had the level of technology that we have today when Cesaria was still here, we could have done some incredibly impactful things. She's not here anymore today, but we have a number of other large artists who are, okay? So what we've done is, just a few examples. Nelson Freitas. I've been working with Nelson Freitas now for about four or five years on a number of projects, and we've done some amazing things. I just passed Portugal on the way here for a quick ceremony that they were presenting him with the first Cape Verdean artist at Universal Music to receive platinum record sales on two tracks. Break of Dawn, Mudalina. This has never happened before, and we did it through data. This past year, one of his videos was the most viewed video on YouTube in Portugal. I'll repeat that. Most viewed video on YouTube in Portugal. We did it through data. Okay? And then technology. We've created a company here in Cape Verde, based out of Cape Verde, called Africa V Next. Okay? And that's where this consortium will come into play. That's where we will collect all the data related to Cape Verde that we're going to use strategically for all these different initiatives, whether it be for government, whether it be for different industries, whether it be for education, for culture, for music, for entertainment. That's going to be the hub that we need to come together and begin to collect that data collectively so that if organization A needs to use the one million uh, user base that we have, they can do so, and so can organization B. As I said, join us so that we all come together and do this as one. So this says Mbimpa Chomaminis, right? So my, my objective here today was to come share this experience that I've had, right? Inside the, uh, an, a view from inside, let you know what's happening, let you know that these large technology organizations, we, we have a saying, well, there's a, there's a big DJ for the younger people in the generation, I mean, the younger people in the audience. There's a DJ right now who says they don't want you to blank, right? DJ Khaled, I don't know if anyone knows him. Could not be more correct. These organizations don't want you to have access to the data. They want you to be a user. They want you to be on there 24 hours a day. They want you to have that phone right next to you on your bed when you wake up, grab it, check it as soon as you do, before you do anything else. They want you to be that user. They don't want you to have the power. They don't want you to have the value. They don't want you to have the gold. And that's the radical part about this. They don't want you to. And it goes against the grain of what I work on, right? Working for Microsoft and Facebook. But it's the view from inside that I'm wanting to share here today because it's important for me for the Cape Verdean community that I relay this information, right? So Mbempa Chomaminis, I came to call on all of you because we have a tremendous amount of work to do. When you leave here today, we only had 18 minutes, but when you leave here today, I want you to start thinking about how can you begin capturing data with any of your constituents, right? Whether you represent a small business, a large business, an enterprise, a government agency, how can you be co begin collecting that data that we can all collectively use to take Cape Verde to the next level? to make sure Cape Verde is that beta test for the next generation, to ensure that we're able to bring everybody up collectively at the same time, okay? So once again, I wanna take one minute out to thank the TEDx organization for putting together a pristine event. I don't think you guys could have done a better job. I don't think you could have done, I mean, absolutely amazing. It was an honor for me to be the first speaker of the first TEDx in Cabo Verde, so I thank you guys for that. Thank you very much. <laughs>